Welcome back to another great episode of Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, as always, uh, Christopher Brown. I know that seems weird that I have to say my name twice, but if they say things enough repetitively, it gets ingrained in people's heads. So that's what I'm planning on doing. Um, We are uh, back with another episode of our transgender week here on the cross-border interviews and we are sitting down with a friend of the family they were at our wedding they uh, uh, know my husband from his time in politics i am pleased to have maddie mcmillan maddie thank you so much for doing this is an honor and a pleasure it is for me too thanks so much for having me christopher it's great to be with you as always um i i guess uh, this is the uh uh first interview i've done post uh brain surgery so uh as many people know that in december i had a part of my brain uh, removed due to a tumor two tumors or four tumors on two lobes and i will be up front this this (laughs) i told maddie during our pre-interview this either could go two different ways so we will see how this goes and maddie has been gracious enough to be sort of the guinea pig on this one (laughs) to see how well i can remember how to do my job um maddie uh i i want to talk about transgender issues here in alberta um i've got to start off the 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 question the line of questioning the same way that i've started off most of this week is who is maddie mcmillan that's a good question chris um i like to put my headline out as hi i'm maddie a neurodivergent transgender albertan those are sort of the three flags that i wear because they round up pretty good for what needs and where i thrive where I get to be myself. Uh, born and raised Calgarian. I've lived mainly in Alberta, but I've traveled across the country. Uh, and I've, I came out later in life. I came out uh, in 2020, sort of at the start of COVID, and then uh, came out publicly at the start of 2021. So it's about a year now for online madness. <laughs> I, I find that uh, fascinating. Uh, I, I, we, we've talked about your story before, but uh, this is the first time you're putting it on record. And I, I'm proud to have you on the show so we can tell your story, but also help people who might be going through the same thing that uh, you went through. Uh, I want to start off in 2020, because that's when your story really starts, because you, 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 internally i think i'm not sure if this is the right word and correct me if i'm wrong you internally come out to yourself saying i want to live an open life as this new person in some sense take me through that moment for you what was that moment like i'd say it's a lot like what your preamble said except i'll swap out this new person with this true person i always have been me it's more so have i known myself and have i acted and represented who I wanted to be as myself. So that's why I say true. Everything before got me to that point, but from that point after it's okay, I'm choosing authenticity as opposed to hiding myself to get through whatever I wanna get through. A job, a bus, whatever. (laughs) So the reason I've been accused in the past of not promoting diverse uh, backgrounds and not, giving my platform to people who have struggled. I want to know, and this is me being Chris Brown, the sort of the green person, the uneducated person, because I do not know what you've gone through. And I want to learn from you of finding your true self. It didn't just come in 2020. It was, there were, there were underlying, I'm assuming there were underlying moments in your past as a child as a teenager as a young adult that you 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 knew something was not being true to who you are so what was that for you what were those some of those moments when you saw to thought to yourself this isn't who i am this isn't my true self uh that's a really good question and and a really good i I guess primary you should you should run a, you should run a, a communications platform. <laughs> I should run a um, podcast where you should I run a podcast. People. Well, I was going to say that, but it's more than just a podcast. Don't. That's true. It's, it, um, one, I'll preamble by 
a lot of times people, you hear something from a person carrying any sort of banner or label or whatever you want to call it, and you assume that's what it is for everyone. You meet one Maddie, you've met one Maddie. You meet one transgender person, you've met one transgender person. We're a sum of all our experiences, is my thought. In my world, I like to think I came out of the womb as I am, just not necessarily set up for peak performance. Uh, that, that means, I don't know, as a kid, like most kids, you're busy learning the world. When puberty, when first puberty came, uh, like most people, you're learning the world, but it's that every day the hormone in the social factory is turned on for puberty. If you're aware that, wow, this is going a trajectory that's more and more uncomfy. Every sort of day it's in the system, it's uncomfortable, a longing for home per se. Now, if you don't know that you're not at home, it's not as easy to describe. So a lot of people will use a longing or a fogginess or a haze or something isn't right, but you don't know because we don't necessarily talk about those things. Now, <laughs> I, there are champions who are able to identify themselves a lot earlier. That was not me. Uh, I got to see 1990s and earlier media describe uh, people like me, not in the best light. So I was a lot more reserved for a while and it took time to to build up experience points in life and to learn from different groups. I had the pleasure of working with your husband, the first openly uh, gay cabinet minister in Alberta. And that was an eye-opener, both to see what we hear too often in the headlines of or negativity or that sort of thing, or a lot of hate, but it was so wonderful to see love in both the trans community from the outside at that point, but just in the greater queer and rainbow community of belonging and following yourself and authenticity, even though there are struggles, even though you can see the rapids ahead doing it nonetheless. So your husband ruined me. He had me started, <laughs> him in that time had me very thinking about myself a lot more of, okay, I'm good at the role I'm in, but do I like the role I've been given? You, there's, you, there's your short answer. <laughs> you, you talked about the media there, but there's another underlying factor in finding your true self and i i know all this week i've I, i've said that uh the city the province that we live in is not quote unquote as progressive as one might think we do have progressive people in this province but in the 90s and the early 80s let's be honest the progressive conservatives weren't as progressive as one would think Ralph Klein was not a fan of LGBTQ members, and there wasn't a person or openly out member of the LGBTQ community who you could look up to. So you didn't have that fostering of it's okay, because now you have people like yourself in 2022 who are out and young kids who are struggling like you might have struggled to find your true self go well if she's done it i can do it because i i know it does get better so i want to know from you how was it growing up in a province that is not quote unquote traditionally progressive especially in the early 90s when you were growing up and how did that shape your coming to your true self that's a long way to ask, basically. How did being born in Alberta affect your uh, story? Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> it affected it in a good way. I, a lot of people can spend a lot of time thinking of, oh, if I did this, uh, why did I waste so much time? I prefer to think of things as everything that's happened to me are experience points that brought me to today and makes me more aware of decisions moving forward. A lot of people from outside and inside Alberta and the prairies uh, can see a lot of harsh things. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, can see a lot of harsh things. And there are a lot of harsh things and there have been in the past. I'd say a difference here compared to places I've been elsewhere in North America or that I've read about in the books uh, is that things are more 
open here. So although that, although there is most definitely some hatred and a promotion of indifference, uh, in many ways, it's it's in the open and it's visible. Obviously, that can make someone want to stay in their closet more. But when you look at el- elsewhere, it's more so, we'll say a more urbanized or an older establishment where these are the way that things are. This is your lot in life, period. Living in Alberta gave me the opportunity to say, I want to be who I am and I want to build who I am. And I want to do that here because that is the Albertan tradition. A lot of people see that sort of hate. And <laughs> there I shadowed your long intro with a, a la- long preamble of my own. A lot of people forget that, yeah, this is the province that people who left the hatred of the Civil War United States in the South, they came to the prairies. They came, we have people of many different religious backgrounds through the history came to the prairies. Indigenous folks themselves moving and choosing where to settle before a lot of history of which my family is participants of. But this is a place of choice and choosing to take a path of action yeah there's going to be problems but it's a lot harder to get that concept through to people family out east that i have friends down uh on the left coast it's a lot harder just go to where you want to be move there no i want to be me where i am in my homeland because this is the place that you can be yourself like look look at our lieutenant governor a lot of people like to say that we're a place of backwardsness but we're also a place that anyone can be themselves uh, and because other people are leaning in and helping and lifting up. (laughs) Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. I agree with that and I appreciate your uh, answer to that because um, we we do sometimes get a bad rap in Alberta that we are the traditional quote-unquote cowboy roughneck redneck uh, blue-collar worker and traditionally they are looked on with a progressive mindset set But when you talk to some people who are in Alberta, who you would think hold more right wing or more uh, right of center views, they are progressive and they accept people. And we are a ever growing melting pot of a great province that we currently live in. So I appreciate your answer on that one. I want to jump forward to 2020. So this is literally the pandemic the start of the pandemic which seems like last week Forever for ago. some people <laughs> um i want i want you to talk to me and tell me your tell me the story about the day that you found your true self that you stopped faking who you were and became your true beautiful self wow I'd say instead of a, a growing day or definitive, well, I'll go with a, a, a swell or a, um, however you want to answer the question. exponential growth, whatever. <laughs> uh, I went into 2020 uh, after leaving working with with your husband a year before the last provincial election. Um, I left that role. Uh, empowered in myself with financial security, with housing security, with all these check boxes. And there was still that question of, uh, there's a haze, there's something I can do better with myself. I want to know myself better. So there was a grow, grow, grow. And at January, 2020, there's a, a great awareness and a great building of a year of effort of what do I like detaching? What norms do I feel like is having to belong more important than belong? Wow. Like those sorts of questions. I'm a social scientist, so there's always time to think about hypotheticals. But the question was, that's when I started taking actions towards myself. Now, with the start of COVID in the front waves and shutdown, my career at that point had me working high-paced jobs. How do we stop the sinking ship of 
people's livelihoods while protecting people from, or people's, while protecting people's livelihoods <laughs> or lives. Uh, that was very, very taxing at a time that there wasn't much juice in the tank. So I'll say that was a growing of, wow, is the best of times of knowing I can take action. I'm empowered. We can do this. Just before you head out on a trip, you think that you're, you're hunky dory and you're good. And then with that downward slope of both morale of people around you, I'm a well networked person. So I felt every wave, uh, every week there was people and families that were impacted directly and there are people who are not here today uh who were there then um and at the time I don't think it gave me the best of hope but that awareness of a sort of a driver there is a work I can do this and I want to do this because this is me uh so I'll say in the summer well summer 2020 is when it was like okay action points like talking there's, we have, again, people always <laughs> make assumptions that there aren't resources, but there are. There are resources, even in Calgary, there are some really good people who are pioneers in a lot of the communities that have gotten to a place that I can be myself living in Calgary, which is something I can't do in most places in this world. <laughs> Anywho, I'll say uh, summer... 2020 is the answer, <laughs> Mr. Brown. So the reason I asked that is because, like you mentioned it there briefly, COVID-19 changed the name of the game. We weren't free to do things. We weren't free to potentially go somewhere that we, if we needed to run away or if we needed to get out of a, a bad situation. But you, you, you took a big leap. You took a big leap to start identifying to yourself, your true self. And in literally in the midst of a pandemic when you can't get sometimes the resources you want you have to do this social distancing one-on-one -on -one via zoom or skype or microsoft teams or whatever you want to call it how did that process work for you because i've talked to a lot of people this week who came out 10 years ago five years ago 13 years ago in the 90s and they didn't have a pandemic to navigate this the challenges and the ups and downs of trying to get resources and get people to sort of not help you but to navigate this change that you are now going to be going on outside of yourself yeah it <laughs> so summer 2020 will say is when i took the armor off because it's very easy if you can pass as a straight white man who's six foot tall there's a lot less worries in that setup of myself than yeah. the truer version so a lot of armor we tore down the wall and when i talked to people of generations of past days like pink floyd i another brick on the wall well i chose to tore down tear down the wall but in the middle of a storm <laughs> Not the best timing, but it was the best timing for me. That's when I came out. Um, well, and would you say there's no there, good time? Like, the, like you can't just say, okay, December 25th, 2023, guess what? I'm going to start being my true self. There's no good time, is there? Like, there's no, like, like Canada day for people to uh, come out of the quote-unquote transgender closet, is there? I Unawarely, <laughs> I came out on International Women's Day. Because it was in my calendar of working on weeks and on this day and that sort of, and then it's like, wow, that, that worked out. I started taking hormone therapy on All Saints Day. There's a day for everything, but I think the best day is when you start living yourself. That's true. Uh, even though sometimes you can't always live authentically, because gosh, I want to yell at clouds sometimes at anger, but <laughs> you gotta be. Anywho, um, it's been interesting because you're right, like resource levels have been different. I've been able to wear a mask, which is was great for a lot of people look at body customization or changing their meat carriage to meet <laughs> their needs per se yeah uh, and it's well these places are closed and timelines of uh it's interesting because okay second puberty of both a social puberty but also a hormonal one again people choose and curate where they can 
but what do you do if that store is not open for another month? We can't go and do this. Oh, you can wear a mask, but gosh, it took every time I set a calendar date for the milestone of my first haircut, I couldn't do it <laughs> because they're in the government's closed again. The world's closed again. And I don't want to sit for a, for more for longer than the average haircut that I've had in my past in a mask situation when maybe if I got hurt going there, I wouldn't feel as justified using up a bed space in an overworked hospital or whatever like that. Good reasons to turn yourself away from things. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it's been a benefit of, I don't have to go to, imagine being able to go through a puberty without having all the social weight all the time. That makes sense because you're locked at home. The downside is you're locked at home and it can be pretty easy to forget that things are changing in a world where people have a lot more stress. There's a lot more, it's a lot easier to promote indifference two years on from COVID. But even in the initial days, the denial of things which we hadn't thought about as privileges rather than day-to-day -day goods. Oh, toilet paper is rough to get. Yeah, that's a real world commodity issue. And that was at the front end of the pandemic. And anywho, I, it's been I, really interesting to socially transition while society is transitioning. <laughs> I, I, I say this glibly. I want to ask, like, I want someone to come on the show who was one of those hoarders who went to the Costco, who went to uh, Safeway and got all that toilet paper. I want to know if they've run out. I, I just want to know. It's been two years. Have they run out of toilet paper? These are the questions. I'm just asking the question. I'm just asking the question. They have like a whole nother room of space now. Exactly. <laughs> like their garage. What do you do like with the bonus room that appears? Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask this question because uh, as much as we joke, uh, we just joke there. I want to ask this uh, sincere question. There are people who are about to do the exact same thing that you did in 2020, who are going to start living their true life. What advice would you give them right now? Because you're relatively, and I, I hate to use this, you're relatively a baby when it comes to the process of being your true self. What advice would you give to the 24 year old the 18 year old the 32 year old person who is now going to start living their true life oh that's tough uh if, if, if I, <laughs> that's a good question um i would i like to default to knowing people will say it gets better but it's more so it's worth it um being yourself is worth it uh liberating yourself of and this isn't just for trans people but like in general it's there's a lot of places in this world that promote shaming people for being who they are and it's very easy to not want to be yourself in those spaces um it's going it could be scary but the reality is that as long as you have a reason to do it, i.e. yourself, knowing that tomorrow can be better, having a reason as opposed to just being like, I'm going to take, taking a blind step forward is nice, but uh, knowing why you're doing something is even nicer. It's like having a mission statement in business. Why do you want to come out? Because it's who you are. And that's a pretty damn good mission statement. Uh, as opposed to like, that's what got me it's a lot easier to weigh things on the other side of taking action. Well, maybe I'll just mitigate a little bit. Maybe I'll just hide myself this way. And you can get places very easy. I, I, got, I got to a pretty kick butt role in Alberta's political system, but not all of me got there. Yeah. Like uh, I've lived that way. And there are people who live in the closet because there are choices that they have to make, but having a mission statement that can drive behind you makes the harder days better. Even on the saddest days of crying, you're able to cry as yourself. So that isn't it. No, I, that's I gotta, a silver lining, I guess. I, I'm going to ask some tough questions here, Maddie, and I apologize uh, immensely. 
So if you don't want to answer them, just please tell me and we'll just continue on. Okay. Um, we, we've talked for the last 30 minutes. We, we, we've been positive, we've laughed, but this story and like many other stories are not always all positive. When you uh, told my husband who you were, he turned to me and he said, Maddie's Matt. And I'm like, okay, that's great. The other way around. Uh, I, er, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Maddie is our new friend. And I said, okay, great. I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to meeting her and getting to know her. But I've sat down with members of the transgender community and that's not always the case. I, <laughs> I am kind of a, like an amazing friend just to toot my own horn, but friends don't I'll always- four and a half, five, four and a half out of five. There you go. But sometimes friends don't always, aren't always the best of friends. When you started telling your story, when you started living yourself truly openly, were you taken back by the support slash reservations that you saw within your family, within your friends, within your work life, within Alberta, living in Calgary as in general? I was, uh, but the opposite way of what I think you're going, the path you're going down. It's very easy. I, I like to think, I like to think that humans have evolved to where we are. And I like to think that's partially because it's a lot easier to work on what is dangerous, what can hurt us, as opposed to focusing on what's the good and that sort of thing. So being in the, yeah, there, there were scary thoughts to think about. There were scary scenarios and some of those scenarios have come true for me in the city of Calgary, uh, in the city of Montreal, in the city of Ottawa. What has surprised me is it hasn't happened in Water Valley or Balzac or Hannah or in Duhamel or in Orléans. It's very interesting where I have the quote, anyway, unquote, so the quote that, unquote more progressive cities that you would think of like Calgary, like Ottawa, like Toronto, like Montreal, and they always get that progressive label, but sometimes the nitty gritty, dirty little secret that you don't want to tell people is they aren't as progressive as you might think. It's harder to be indifferent when there's less people around you. I think, anywho, I was amazed at how inclusive without caring to understand and that's like even even with family on both sides my one side of my family is is prairie scott we got here before the treaties were signed uh and the other side is, is quebecois very different backgrounds but i'm the first person with labels like or what i'm the first person like me to be living like me in either side of those families that i'm aware of i know that there as a child, there was, this is, this is so-and-so's friend and they're very good friends, but that was sort of the extent. And even to the point of like an assumption of maybe you just get cleaved from the family because that's what's happened. I can, I don't have enough digits on my hands to count how many people I know who've moved to Vancouver because that's the next natural thought. Oh, you come out, you move out of here. But I think what I was most amazed with was those weren't, I didn't need to leave. I was able to be me, even though people didn't understand me and stumble a lot. I don't understand other people and stumble a lot. Uh, the awareness of the problems and difference can cause paired with the benefits of being able to work with someone, no matter who they are. Did you lose people? I, I don't want to use the word friends because anyone who would walk away from a friendship over someone living their true selves is not truly a friend so that sounds like a great poster <laughs> <laughs> there you go we can start selling the 25.99 and they could get them on the cross-border interview.ca website did you lose people in your life uh yeah hands down <laughs> um are you better off without them in your life <laughs> it's very easy to say something like that like from an introspective point of view but I wouldn't say so. Like there, 
Yeah, I'm not going to spend time rehashing the situation, but I'm not better off for a world that can close its doors on people. <laughs> uh, um, I like your people. Ha- people have walked away or not called, and that I'd say the biggest question is when I find myself continually coming out and in social interactions, especially in COVID, there's a, an additional gate of setting something up. Will this person do business with me? Will this person meet with me? Should I disclose with them? Hey, hey, you know that like I've grown my hair a bit and I, I like myself more, right? And I have had some meetings. I, I have to do those mental checks because I've had meetings end right off the bat. Um, it's given me the experience to, to, to prioritize when I want to have meetings with people who might not get it and might not have the resources or capacity to try to get it. And when I say it, it's not me. I'm a person. When I say it, it's the understanding that our world had, the world doesn't move to the beat of just one drum, even though it's very easy to march to the beat of one drum. You you and I have been friends for almost four years now, I would say. Uh, I'm just trying to remember what our what my how long I've been married and then minus like six months. Um, so three and a half years. Um, you have talked openly when you've been at our house, socially distanced, uh, about the process that you've had to deal with the government bureaucracy. <laughs> Changing who you are truly to your true self is easy. It's kind of like a flick of a switch. You start living who you are truly. But let's be honest, the government hasn't caught up with that, whether that be changing a driver's license, whether that be uh, doing stuff with AHS or the Alberta Health Services or even Canadian, the Canadian government. Was is there a chance that we need to make the system more accessible for people who have gone through and are going through the same thing that you are going through right now? I'd say I'll channel my best <laughs> drama classes. Yes, and. Yes, and. Our bureaucracy is based off of a proud tradition of bureaucracies that puts people into boxes and makes great things by stacking those boxes depending on your perspective of what great things are. You can get the trains running, but sometimes our bureaucracies don't ask where those trains are going to. Um, At the same time, I like to, bureaucracy, when you, humans know what, about 200 people on average, that's what we're sort of conditioned for up until the past 200 years. Bureaucracy is needed to help sort of organize us. The question is, when the first form or when any form blocks you from accessing the bureaucracy we have to wonder what checks are in the system so i'll give you an example my last name is m-c-m-i-l-l-a-n uh there are other people from that world m-a-c and i have and i have people tell me all the time oh you're irish because it's m-c versus m-a-c and it actually is mick and mac are like son of versus sons of but it, it's when the English bureaucrat wrote your names down. <laughs> and that's not just for Scottish people, but that's for people all over the world with all over different last names. Many of people who don't even carry their last name, who buried their culture, maybe when it wasn't even their choice. I think trans people who... Tra- pe- transgender issues with uh, bureaucracies that... Uh, acknowledge that transgender people uh, exist, do so challenging them, uh, challenging that point of if we're going to open the gate through for these citizens, we should the rest. And some people don't want to take that. So they say, no, just follow the system, go away. I, I take pride in living in a province where, so, where every time that you get told no, another bureaucracy will listen. So an example is in the province of Alberta. Uh, most places where you have to leave or where you ch- legally change your name, it's you, you take, if there's an old criminal record, you basically take the folder and you update with the new name. That's an oversimplification. 
in Alberta, you also get finger, you have to go to the Mountie, you have to go get fingerprinted so that they can reference your fingerprints in any active criminal case right now. Because there's a presumption if you're changing your name in the province of Alberta, you are a criminal, or you should at least be treated as one. Now that leads to barrier. I was in the military, never, <laughs> never did I even need to be fingerprinted. I should have because of a permanent ID, but that bureaucracy has issues too. I'll tell you what though, sometimes when you're choked out of a bureaucracy, it means you can't get a job and you can't use credentials. And the University of Calgary recognized that. And their bureaucracy recognized the value of, yeah, we're going to call people what they want to be called because that is a better way of doing business for us. U of C does that, AMA does that. There are resources you can find online. Sometimes we call it a preferred name, but we're at a point in society now that if a bureaucracy doesn't want to pay attention to you, you can once again go back to not participating in that bureaucracy. My great grandfathers chose their birthdays as what? One of them Canada Day, one July 4th, because they're both born on the prairies and no one knew when. You can work around a bureaucracy. Now, it's horrible to work around a bureaucracy, but it's sometimes it demonstrates that, okay, maybe you should open up a little bit more. Anyway, thanks for that little ramble. <laughs> hey, I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, if you didn't talk, it'd be a very bad audio podcast or, uh, well, visually it would be okay, but audio would be just weird. <laughs> um, we pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show with a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. We talked about the government bureaucracy part of it. We've talked about the finding your true self. We've talked about family... We've talked about friends. I want to ask the million dollar question now. And this is going to be challenging because I don't know how to properly word it. I, the only reason I'm asking you is because I feel like you and I are good enough friends where you will tell me to go F myself if I ask the wrong question here. I'll tell you that even <laughs> if I don't ask a question. <laughs> There is a assumption, a bad one, because you never, should never assume, that you would regret transitioning. You go through the process, you get the medical surgery, you start taking estrogen or hormones, whatever one you are on, and then there's a moment where you would go, what did I do? Why, why, why am I doing this? I was happier because now I've lost people. I've lost jobs. I've, I can't, people aren't looking at me the same way that they used to look at me. Has that ever crossed your mind since 2020? Have you ever thought to yourself, did I do the right thing here or no? Because it doesn't seem like you would say yes, but I, I, I've always wanted to ask, but yet again, I, for anyone who's read listening to this right now and you want to send me your negative comments, please send them to crossborderinterviews.ca and then you can click on the contact form and I will file them in the appropriate location. But I'm asking a question because I'm trying to learn myself. Maddie, can you answer that question? If not, then I apologize. Uh, of course. <laughs> uh, do, do I have any regrets? No. Um, that question shows two interesting things though. So one, like that, that is a common talking point for people who, nece who don't necessarily want further conversation to happen. So like if you Google Mike Pence in that sentence, you're probably gonna hit a lot of websites of there could be regret. And I think it comes from this mindset that when someone transitions, it's an A to a B, a flip of a switch, when more so it's, starting to live your life it, it's not a it's not a binary but no, uh, situation in, in in that sort of timeline but also i'd like to point out all the concerns or a, a, a listener can call me out later 
all the concerns I picked up that you were saying were about not the person, but the outside world. Yeah. So I, so one transition means different things to different people, socially transitioning versus uh, taking different hormone blockers, putting different hormones in, uh, having physiological like body fat modifications through surgeries um those are all are all different uh i think the easiest thing is when i do face adversity it's sort of resi- it i don't feel regret so i ask my question that my i that question reaffirms myself all the time when there is a bleak point it's very easy to say this is me i did this to myself oh woe is me but then taking a step back, it's, I was going to the grocery store. Donnie Dum Dum was having a bad day. It's not me. It's, wow, the, I can't believe the society works like this. As opposed to, I regret, I regret myself. No, I love myself. I love living here. This is the best place to live. Uh, <laughs> As RuPaul would say, if you can't love yourself, who the hell can you love? Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes. I've watched uh, yeah, 14 I think seasons Ava. of that. <laughs> so it's very true though, because like how many people go around trying to find love instead of or so that they don't have to confront loving themselves. Because there's a lot of easy ways that I could have said I, I'm not worthy of love. But when you find out that you are, it's really easy. When you love yourself, it's really hard uh not to it's really hard to say that there's regret. Yeah, there's problems with liberation, but better than before at times <laughs> i want to go back for a second in in this interview i i said something inappropriate and i want to just take a moment here and apologize um i used a name that i shouldn't have used and i do apologize for that uh, because that is not who you are that is not who you ever will be in my mind you are maddie and that is all um so i do apologize for that the reason I say that is because I, I guarantee you someone yelled at their screen when I said that, but I want to know from you, and this is, this is story time with Maddie McMillan. Take me through the very first time when someone identified you correctly without you having to tell them, without you have, having to say, no, that's not who I am. This is who I am. What was that moment like in your mind? Uh, and do you remember that pretty day? Pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to give you an answer for, for the question. I can answer a million ways to that. Because I, like, Maddie is my name. And people have called me Maddie long before, like, being, it reflects, wow, they see me. So being seen in any way or recognize that you're being seen is a very warm feeling. Uh, once I started transitioning, the the immediate answer was, yeah, I went to the, I was cutting through town. I went to the Dollarama on 14th Street and two, with, uh, with a friend and two people were yelling at us. And then they were yelling at, no, they were yelling at someone looking for change and that person correctly gendered me. And uh, that was really, it was a warm experience seeing this person is getting verbally accosted in a piss poor economic situation, but they still recognize the value of recognizing other people. And I've had the benefit of having a very positive rapport with uh, the, uh, I've had a lot more interaction with street people who have needed to find existence on the streets. And it was really nice to sort of feel that warmth of this person, solidarity, you're being you and I'm being me. And we're getting through this. So I'd say that it was a really warm day. And I know that there were, I think, no, there were other, there was some yuck later in that day, but I don't even remember it because the highlight of is going to that Dollarama, which trust me is not normally someone's highlight in the day, but Dollarama has good deals. You can get some good stuff there. <laughs> hey, I, I do most of my shopping there. I got most of my Christmas and New Year's presents there. So um, no, not if Ricardo's listening to this. I, I I got them at like Guess and like Gucci and like Tommy Hilfiger. I don't know whatever stuff he likes. I want to I, I want to I want to flip the script a little bit here, because we talked about 
being identified as your true self for the first time. But we live in a world that doesn't always accept your true self, will never accept your true self. Do you still run into moments where people will refuse to identify you as the gender you are and will only identify you as the person you were, your fake self? Uh, yeah, I'd say yes. But I run across more actors who get over those rapids. I don't know. When I, here's an, when I went to... Uh, there's always going to be examples of that. And I could list off a ton of examples, but I don't think that really helps. I think it's, uh, it's easy for when you live in, when you've lived in a worldview that uh, doesn't necessarily allow in other ways of life. And then someone opens the floodgates. And if you don't have the skill sets to interact with those other ways of living, You've got a lot on your plate. When someone's yelling at me in this, <laughs> when, when someone looks at some identifiers of me uh, and wants to yuck or whatever, it's the realization this person isn't probably all there right now. There's a reason that they're behaving this way. Is it to make other people cool? I could dig in all those days. I could ask the why are they being like this to me, but it's easier to identify what led them here it wasn't me it's not about me it's about them and maybe I don't want to be on this episode of their world maybe I just want to be the person at the grocery store and not the grocery store episode <laughs> that's true for anyone who's watching right now if you just did a jump cut for like 10 minutes and you now see me wearing glasses I just found them after not having them for about two days so now I can actually see Maddie while I'm talking to her <laughs> so that is why you see me with glasses right now um I have one last area of conversation I want to talk to uh, talk about before we start wrapping up here, Maddie, and that is the future. The future is always the unknown because you never know what's going to happen. If you would have told me two and a half years ago we'd be doing interviews via Zoom and we'd be living in a post pandemic or post or in a post pandemic. first wave pandemic, <laughs> exactly fourth or fifth wave or however many waves you want to call it now. Um, What's next on your journey to true self-acceptance and true self-love? Which, which uh, I should, yet again, I'm not saying you don't truly love yourself and do not truly accept yourself, but you, there is a, I'm assuming there is a moment when you will feel, oh my God, I'm going to get so many nasty letters from this episode. I feel it already. This is post-surgery Chris Brown. So please take it easy on me guys when you send me nasty emails. Um, what is what is the I don't know want to, I don't even want to say end game because I'm going to be copying Marvel. What's the future hold for Maddie McMillan in your journey? A future. I know that's a, that's a pretty uh, after my pretty, like I should have just three minute like a future. <laughs> stumbling over the question. You say a future. <laughs> uh, it was very easy when I was focused on not having all of me shine through. Uh, it was very easy not to think about a future. When you're in a world about mitigating how the, you're going to be in the world and that sort of mindset, you're not thinking about the future as something you're going to get to, or it isn't as easy to think that way. Uh, it's about getting to the next day. So it's like I've passed that point of I have a future. It's the, and it's more so the taking what steps. It's really nice to be woke. It sucks to, to see that some parts of society aren't as excited. Um, but I'm, a, I'm at 100% capacity, which is really good. Like, I wasn't able to get a job right away. But the work that I was able to find lets me be who I am, uh, which lets me be way better at what I do. Because I'm spending my time doing doing the work as opposed to surviving the work. Uh, what's in the future? Any chance that lets me demonstrate <laughs> uh, demonstrate not that I'm here and I'm queer, but I am part of Alberta. You are part of Alberta. We are Alberta. 
And if parts of where we live say you don't belong here, they're the ones who don't belong. The people, <laughs> they can leave, frig that. Uh, I am who I am, not because of just one community, but because of all my communities. And now it's at a point of, well, self-actualization enables me to empower those groups. So it's been really rewarding. I, I do a little contract work here and there of just helping people that have helped me along the way. And it's really rewarding just to do it because it feels good and because it's sharing to contribute. I'm a fan of contributing, especially in a world like we have all the problems we do right now. It's very easy to give up but it's way more rewarding to have purpose, to fight that indifference and to stop the indifference of indifference as opposed to just yelling at people or whatever or ignoring it. True that. Um, <laughs> my follow up to that though is, does your journey end here? Does your journey continue on? Is there, okay, I'm gonna, I, Get again, I, I, in is this, this my the, final form? No, no, not not your final form. I should know. Yeah, like it, this isn't Pokemon. Like, like you start off as Charmander and you end as Charizard. Like that's this is not. Where I lived I'm in going. a. I was thinking about that earlier. I, I lived in a world where I thought of Pokemon Red, but you know, Pokemon Blue. I'm a blue. I'm a water type Pokemon. There, there you we go. go. Um, I, I got, the question is, the medical journey is. Is there more that needs to be done for yourself? Because uh, we, I've talked to a few people this week who have said that they are stuck in limbo because of COVID-19, because AHS has been dealing with a lot of the backlog of COVID-19. My surgery got postponed because of COVID-19. So I can imagine that you are now in limbo if you are on that medical journey of true self uh I, I, all I can think of is the word form right now because you put that in my head. So, but it, finally being able to truly accept the person because you are at that stage now where you can say, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that person. I am my fully true self now. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that we have a forum to talk about these things. <laughs> um, I understand that there's backlog and there's lineups and that sort of thing. I thankfully have a, I'm in a headspace where I'm enjoying life. Obviously down the road, there are things that I want to pursue, but at the same time I realize, yeah, we, it's really difficult to stop and take a breath knowing that the world is stopping and taking a breath. Um, I'm very happy. I have had access to, to AHS's system, which is great. I know that there's cues. I'm okay with that. With that, I took a community to get me where I'm at today, and I I can wait in line a little bit longer. Um, that doesn't mean <laughs> that doesn't mean go around town saying Maddie's schedule for surgery thoughts or these things, because the reality is some people some people don't know if they'd want to have surgeries or or any changes in in that sort of world. Um, some people like how they're set up there and there's different surgeries that are done but the reality is normally we don't <laughs> in, in this context yes but don't for the listening audience no one go away and be like oh we can go and talk about trans people surgeries because that's not the world but you're right there is a medical lineup yeah. um we have a benefit of the montreal or the services in montreal that ahs is linked to so thank goodness we don't have there's options that don't mean crossing over a border. I know, I know cross-border things can be really good. Uh, they can be the best. <laughs> um, so we are blessed to have not only a system that does support people, it can support trans folks better, but it does support us. Uh, and its external, re its partner resources are also in the country, which is beneficial as well. Um, especially considering the, the, the world of travel even outside of a pandemic situation. So my very last question to hear, Maddie, this is, this is the big one. This is the million dollar question that I think- That I was asked. the last question. The, oh, it's always the million dollar question. Everything's a million dollar question. Where's this million dollars going to? <laughs> um, 
the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown's uh, Travel Alberta tour of 2023. Oh no, we're raising money. Um, I want you to take a moment and speak to your younger self. Speak to the younger self and speak to the younger generation who's listening and watching this right now. What would you tell them about the journey that they are about to take and what they are about to go on? And what advice would you tell them? Because I asked you this earlier on, but this is more poignant at you talking to yourself. What would you want it to have known before you took that leap in 2020? Uh, that'll be okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds like a very simple thing to say, but it'll be okay. Even in rough seasons, if things aren't going to be okay, then they aren't going to be okay. But tomorrow will be okay. Um, I, I, living your life is worth it like living life is okay living your life is worth it like being empowered the scariest thing is to be in charge of your life but it's also liberating so if i was ta- if i was talking to myself a decade ago it's like what was i doing a decade i had an awareness before and there were real like there are real world restraints or constrictions or however you want to put it but yeah being at the being in the driver's seat is worth it, even if that means you can't go everywhere. Loving your life is better than trying to live everyone else's. Maddie, I want to thank you so much for being open, honest, transparent with us for the last hour. It's been honestly uh, a pleasure to get to know. Well, yeah, I knew who you were, but get to tell your story on my show and get to ask the questions that I've been wanting to ask this week because without asking questions you do not learn without learning you cannot grow without growing we cannot change as a better to a better people so i want to i appreciate you doing this today well i i gotta say thank you so much for doing a whole week dedicated to uh communities that don't normally have access i know that it's easy to say that you get right but for the listening audience like one, you're giving a week to open up issues that people outside of the trans community also need to maybe have a better awareness. Two, this isn't the first time we've we've interviewed, and for the audience, I don't think you'll be able to find my, the first one because you, when I came out, you asked, do you want me to keep up the old one? And I said yes at first, and then I changed my mind, and you respected that. And like, thank you <laughs> for both that and for this week and for crossing all sorts of borders, whether they're cis and trans or uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, or heck, progressive conservative to progressivism. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that greatly. Um, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, I have a bit of a weird I- exit, one exit uh, this time, because this is my first one that I've recorded in 2022. But I will say this. Uh, If you haven't already, head over to our Eventbrite page, which will be linked in the show notes, and grab tickets for our February 3rd live edition of the cross Border Interviews with Councillor Penner. We are going to be doing a lot of these over the next few months because we are raising some money to, A, give back to some great community organizations that we have in this community, but also, two, the other portion, 50% of the portions that are raised are going to our cross-border interviews Tours Alberta, where we are planning on sitting down with 316 mayors, Reeves, and First Nation chiefs across this great province and talking about their community. So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Board Interviews with Chris Brown. We will be back Friday with another great episode. Maddie, once again, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Have a great one.